Welcome Shifali, welcome Tilothma and welcome Tanuj. Uh, we all know that uh, the first season, of course, had won the best drama series at the Emmys and it, is, it was a big, big achievement, not just for your, you guys, but for us also as Indians and it really made us proud. Uh, the first season was about Nirbhaya. We all know that it has completely had shaken the conscience of the nation. It was a big deal also, thankfully. The second season is about the Kacha Banyan gang. Very notorious, have been active since 1987 actually. And the north of India has been quite uh, horrified by their uh, uh, nefarious activities. Now, compared to the first, the Nirbhaya case, how is it an upgrade from the first? I don't know if we look to upgrade or downgrade. We don't, I don't know if we think in those terms. Season one was such an achievement and it was so amazing. Mm. Um, and there was a kind of case that can't be duplicated or, and shouldn't be, to mm. be honest. Yeah. I don't know if we were trying to upgrade, but as great as season one was, uh, there's a lot of people who also couldn't watch it due to the nature of the material. Mm. And so in terms of, you know, if you want to say upgrade, the hope is that we'll bring in more audience members into this season two because uh, it's a case that maybe they can stomach uh, in a different way. Mm. And, you know, if, if anything, uh, you know, season one people came in for the crime, they knew about the crime, but they fell in love with these characters. You know, mm. season two, we wanted them to come back for the characters. <clears throat> yeah. And if there's an upgrade, it's because the character stories have become deeper and, uh, and we're going further with the people that India has come to love. And uh, they'll learn about this crime on the way. So um, there's other technical things I can talk about, you know, screen size and format and all kinds of nerdy things. But um, uh, more than anything, I think, putting the focus on our actors and performances and our characters um, was the big shift. Ashif Ali, somebody had said that no one can stop the idea whose time has come. And I think your time has come. Yeah. Which would, <laughs> it's taken really long. It's taken a long time. Time is taking yeah. time. Time is taking time. time. Is taking time. <laughs> but um, if you don't know, I must tell you that she recently got awarded as the best actress in the Indian Film Festival at Melbourne for Jalsa. Congratulations Thank on that. You. And what a lovely, deliciously nasty character that was in uh, Darlings. And of course, Vartika Chaturvedi, who's based on the, the DCP Chaya Sharma, who actually cracked the case. First of all, let me tell you, uh, your eyes do a lot of talking on screen, so you must insure your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, yesterday somebody else oh told God. me this. Uh, Pallu said, you know, J-Lo insured her butt. Yeah. <laughs> I think you should insure your eyes. It, it, Shafali is India's Al Pacino. <laughs> and and she, her performance this season is unbelievable. You, you have to see it, and it's all in the face. It, it's what yeah. she's crafted, and what she can do with... Sometimes the reaction, we don't even need a line from her. We just mm. go to her face mm. and it makes the scene. Yeah, so true. All, of, all the time. How do you feel in this phase of your career, one? Secondly, how is Delhi crime a big milestone in your mm, life, in your career? I've been blessed with a lot of love and appreciation, yes. but it never translated to yes, work. Mm. Or the kind of work I wanted to do. Um, and that's taken a really long time. Mm. But like you correctly said, Delhi crime is the turning point of my life. Mm. You know, suddenly, the, one, there was a director who took that risk and said, I'm going to put her up there. Mm. Secondly, because I think even we didn't, of course, Netflix came on board later, but it was made like a long uh, story format. Mm. It wasn't made as a film. Yeah. So it broke the norm of what is required on the box office. True. True. Because one person took a chance and gave me something so precious, mm. there were other directors who yes. said, okay, we've always believed in her uh, yeah, and like, she can do this. She can yeah. carry an entire thing on her shoulders. Mm -hmm. And, they, the, you know, directors came to me with work like that, wrote stuff, uh, which is so exciting and interesting. Mm. And uh, so it, that's how it changed it. Yeah. You know, and it, DC has given me my favorite character. Mm. Like, I'm obsessed and possessed by Delhi Crime and Vartika. Uh, Tilothma, I'm coming to you. First of all, many congratulations Thank on your you. performance in Sir. Thank you. Uh, again, uh, that is one movie that my parents, while they're sitting at home, watch over and over again. Really? For so some sweet. reason. It is such a deliciously cute them. film. Yeah, uh, I will do that. Thanks. And of course, uh, there's one more film if you haven't watched, then please watch Gautam Ghosh's film, Rahgir. Oh, yeah. Beautiful film with uh, uh, Adil Hussain. Uh, you're also one of those actors. Uh, people have taken their own sweet time to understand you, appreciate you. But once they know who you are, you are irreplaceable. So, a first film, Monsoon Wedding. Monsoon Wedding. Oh I mean, can you ever go back? Alice. <laughs> 
she was the most beautiful like alice and uh, what was his name dubey dubey yeah oh my god i'm getting goosebumps yeah. when i say it what a what a it was so beautiful oh you were together in yes Boston? yes 20 Two years ago. Oh wow. God. And Tilotma, uh, the series are out on Netflix. Many people have already watched it by now, and now we know why you are there. And now we know why did she say that people are not born criminals. Hmm. Something makes them into a criminal. And with this series, we also get a peek into the class divide or the process of turning into a criminal. And you are a person. While the entire first season. was uh, only from the point of view of the police and the victims and the people and we didn't have a pov of the nirbhaya's uh, convicts but here we have a pov another pov which is from the point of view the lens of the criminal ki uski life story back story kya hoti hai and she plays a dreaded <laughs> a woman who is also in the thick of crime uh, that's an interesting perspective or a take that the takers have taken here because we only see men doing the crimes in many but right now we have a woman too mm-hmm. that's an interesting character to play and also an interesting piece of life piece of reality talk about that for me uh, in any in anything uh, more than the event itself um, the cracks that led to it mm. are more interesting mm. that um, there are these fault lines you know that exist in in what looks like this glass looks perfect mm. right now and and it's holding the water in it or the coffee in it mm. um but if it goes through an earthquake um or there's a change in the environment mm. it becomes really hot mm. there'll be certain fault lines that develop mm. which is invisible to the eye right mm. now and all of us have it mm. and uh in 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 society so called criminals mm. those fault lines are become like the be all and the end all mm. they are bad they're guilty mm. uh they should be punished they're less than human they're animals they should be hung mm. you know there's a there's a language of retribution and uh and anger and it's it's just a it's a you know it's we need to let off that steam we need to have a scapegoat it's a classic greek tragedy had that scapegoat where it used to be initially a goat that mm. is killed mm. and then it became a character that had to be removed mm. for the society to feel whole again and to feel normal again mm. uh and i think that's a dramatic device that you know the, the shakespearean plays are followed mm. and great greek tra- tragedies have followed uh but in life it's impossible to uh you know uh to have uh, these fault lines only reserved for a certain minority group mm. we all have those fault lines mm. and uh, for me it was easy to access her by looking at my own fault lines mm-hmm. you know that uh, i could have easily been in her shoes mm. if I, i had a husband who thought i was a slut for going out and doing what i wanted to do mm. you know the way he talks about his wife or or, or the way society judges her for not wanting to be a mother mm. is it a crime mm. uh because she, she didn't want a child mm. in fact <coughs> in fact i mean you know we don't we don't consider marital rape mm. crime but if a woman doesn't want and is not ready to have a child but you do force her mm-hmm. it is marital rape mm. there's like generational anger going to be very interesting watching two women at war with each other isn't it that's i just found it the conversation to be so deliciously in uh, making me very inquisitive about what uh, you know what lies ahead and all of how many episodes tanuj five oh five just five yeah mm, okay <laughs> all right so very interesting are oh, you really get it i really uh, that are you you watched it i i feel that you understand it that's just a good feeling yeah uh, i understand this very well also because you know the then commissioner of police of delhi mr iraj kumar he had written a book called khaki files we know that and uh, the first series were made were based on that and it was based on his memoirs and his investigation into the nirbhaya case and uh, we are also i can't say family friends but i know the family very well he had written one more book called dial d for dawn and I have not been associated with none of my family members have been into police services but this family was my window to look at the lives of police officers uh, in fact ankita mr iraj kumar's daughter 
has also made her maiden film, which is about the interplay between the police and the media. This series, uh, Delhi Crime, is also a great window for us to look at and understand the lives of the police officers and their families. In the first season, there was this right after Nirbhaya case, she catches an auto and you start You're so thinking, scared for her. Even though she's a cop, yeah. she's at equal yes. danger because she's yes. catching a yes. public transport. I remember feeling extremely uncomfortable because she's also a very dear friend and you're like, Rasika, please don't, don't take that auto. Don't take that auto. Yeah. <laughs> mm. <laughs> like, because I, I lived that. in Delhi, you know, 17 years with carrying a divider in my bag so that, you know, when it happens, I can shove it up there <laughs> or whatever, you know, but it's... Yeah. After this experience of working in Delhi crime, pre and post, what's your view on the lives of cops? They're not super cops mm. or they're not just corrupt cops. Yeah. It's not what it's shown Correct. as as simple as that. And even though they have so much power mm. and they can yield it, they have difficulties which are which may seem ridiculous. Yes. I mean, you can't even imagine that this cop could have this problem. True, true. You know, I remember when we were shooting in the cop station and I, one of the uh, lady uh, officers was talking to me mm. and she said, you know, until a couple of years ago, we didn't have a female toilet in the police station. Just imagine that. Oof. I mean, something as simple as that or what they show in one mm. where they actually have to use their own money because they don't have money for conveyance and, you know, stuff like that. Mm. They don't have a car. They don't have, if you want to chase Imagine. criminals, yeah, you have to get, get your own auto. Transport. <laughs> it's kind of, True. it's really crazy. True. So, um, like, a very, very important moment in DC2, mm. uh, which also kind of really does the switch for Vartika, uh, is what happens with Bhupinder. Mm. Mm. And it's because an equipment has mm. gone wrong. Mm. These people put their lives at stake every day. Mm. And there are so many people who actually suffer from depression. And uh, like in any other field, yeah, yeah, yeah. there is good and there is bad. Mm. You know? Uh, so it's not like they're holier than thou. I'm True. not trying to say that. True. There is good, there is bad. Like in the second one, mm. we talk about a couple of, in season two, we mm. actually talk about mm. certain cops who are completely off, mm. who, who actually compromise the investigation. Mm. So it's not that we're just trying to make them holier than thou or we're yeah. trying to highlight it, but as a common man to sit outside and say, are what, it's so simple. True. True. It's a bit. That's so true. That's so true. That is also looking at the other side of the coin, which is so important. And lastly, um, Tanuj, uh, you would agree, maybe, that we are in a space where different treatments are being employed to tell stories. Like there are some web series and content which show a lot of gory scenes. Even while Nirbhaya was about the worst, the most gruesome crime against a woman, even the opening shot was from the point of view of the police van and not from the point of view of the crime happening. So we didn't actually see what's happened, but we felt the, the repulsive energy mm. as, if, as though we had witnessed it and seen it with our eyes without the camera ever showing it to us. Now, when we say we are scared of death, we sometimes not scared of death, but sometimes we are actually scared of the idea and the process of death, how it comes to us, you know, burning to death or being... Something like that, like Kacha Banyan Gang, the way they kill people. And to tell you the truth, twice my family members have had a brush with this. Oh game. God! Imagine. My father was posted in Ghaziabad and my parents, you talk about elderly couples being at risk, my parents were in Ghaziabad and the gang had come into that colony and actually had knocked at their door. Oh God! Yeah. And in another incident, my another extended family members, so that cousin of mine is quite a... But it's true how shit scared you feel when you're you know, faced with a situation where you could be dead by that person. Uh, in this, uh, I want to talk about the treatment of yours as a director. How much of the blood and the gore and the killings do we see? Or have you not shown it? Or how, how have you portrayed the violence? Well, you know, I, I, we don't show the killing in real time like ever in a very um, uh, way that covers the crime, I should say. Mm. Um, season one, 
uh, and I'm sure they debated in season one, you know, do we show this crime or not? Yeah. I'm sure there was a debate early on, and Richie very sensitively, uh, I think, pushed for that not to be the case, because the audience is already bringing in a complete knowledge of uh, this case, and, and it was a horrifying case that captured the imagination of everybody, mm. correct? So, you know, you don't have to put that on screen. The audience is going to do more with their information, whatever's in their mind. The audience will do more than anything you can show. Mm -hmm. In this season, you know, while your family, I, you know, has gone through this and while maybe the urban legend has been, you know, I remember it in Delhi as well when I was there in the 90s, but the majority of people don't know anything about this case. And my introduction into this crime was, uh, you know, looking at the crime scene photos. What what did these crime scenes look like? And they were horrifying. Mm. I had to live with, I, I couldn't, I'd never seen it. I had to live with these images myself. Mm. Like, do I, what, what is, you know, you see feet sticking out of, under a bed, the pool of blood or, you know, cracked heads, cracked skulls. Mm. And for us to create a season where um, the cops had the correct motivation to go chase down this gang mm. and the audience, for the audience to understand it, we need, we need to show it. We need mm. to show something. Mm. So um, we've definitely taken the time to put these crime scenes out and they might not be the easiest for everyone to look at or it might be something that it works for people I, I can't it's, it's hard for me to say but I feel like the story wasn't didn't have enough weight until we put those images in there were, it was thoughtfully done it wasn't just it's not there for sensationalism at all this isn't an action film or a zombie film or a gory show in my opinion mm -hmm. uh, people use the word gore for certain things but I don't I think it's all about creating the reality of the case so you can enjoy it in the same way you enjoy season one as the show being um, a realistic portrayal. You're from Colombia, right? Yeah. Uh, you started filmmaking from there. Now in India, we do follow a system where a, an actor or, a, or an artist's um, uh, what he can bring to the table is also associated with his social media following or how much is he out there in the media. In America, we don't have too many big actors on social media. They just walked out of it. So would you say that the number of followers an actor has on social media has got nothing to do uh, with the viability of his working with, an, with a director or a big producer? Uh, not for me. I not hope not. Me. Not for me. I hope not, yeah. Yeah, not for me. I, I think what's happening, so many. The, the industry studios have learned, that they've, they've cast their films with people with large followings. You put, you say, you put, bring them on set, you say action and cut, and you don't get the performance. The films don't work because yeah. these aren't, a lot of times, social, social media following mm. does not uh, is, does, is not your representative acting skill, right. you know, and, and I think enough people have been burned by um, casting their, casting based on, um, you know, social media Follow. perception. Yeah. And, um, it, but, you, but you know, you, you look at, especially with OTT demands, we demand uh, quality actors, not yeah. stars. People who can, like, because at the end of the day, it's four in the morning, your light's about to come up, you're in a tough corner, you have three more shots to get, mm. and what do you need in that moment? You need a very scrappy filmmaker and an actor who's going to deliver when the pressure's on. Right. I don't think that's always going to be the case with, you know, just someone with a big following. But I'll tell you what, Shafali Shah and Talat Mashom, yes, they are going to give it to you in that yes. moment and win. So that's where I go. So true. So true. So Mark Twain said that East is East and West is West and the trains shall never meet. Now we see them meeting and how. Ah. <laughs> oh, I'm going to go over there and hug you. <laughs> what a line. What a punch. All the best for Delhi Crime too. And welcome Thank to you. India. Uh, though you've made several movies yeah, before as well. I've been here. Uh, to welcome and all the best to work. Thank you. Thank you, Atika. Take care. Thank you.